It is time for IDK, where we learn how to do something new. Dahlia is definitely a summertime favorite among flowers, and today we are going to learn how to make simple and elegant centerpieces with them. Melissa, are you ready? I'm ready. Are you uh, ready? Uh, well, I noticed that, that my tool has a safety on it. They all have little Oh, they all do. Okay, I wasn't yeah. sure if this was a personal thing or not. Uh, you're with Tara Bella Flowers. Hello. So welcome to Studio 13 Live. Thank you. And what are you going to, you're going to show us how to do what now? We are going to make some really fun, small, little Dahlia forward centerpieces. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Dahlia is my favorite flower. I feel like especially since moving to the Pacific Northwest, because I see them in the farmer's markets all the yes. time. To me, it's like a a firework in a flower or something like sure, that, if that makes sense. Sure. How would you kind of describe a dahlia and like what do you think make this flower, makes this flower oh, so popular? Well, I mean, they're extremely diverse. You have ones that are literally called dinner plates. They're literally the size of a dinner plate or your face. Oh my gosh. And then down to tiny little buttons that can be used as boutonnieres. So they're diverse and they're really flexible as far as their uses mm -hmm. within using something a little bit more formal or being a little bit more conservative um, or I call these like the roses I consider a very formal flower yes dahlias are like the ravers oh right they're in all the rainbow of colors they're super colorful lots of different shapes they're just fun you can't not have fun with dahlias I like that you. Yeah. okay yeah. all right so like where do we start how do we start so what we're going to start with is these tiny little center pieces and our goal is to make an arrangement that's basically double the size of the container. Okay. Um, that way the arrangement doesn't look like it's getting swallowed within this vessel. Um, and I always start with the heavier ones first. We're going to grab our safety clippers. Okay. Got them. And we're going to start with our bigger, bigger dahlias. We have, this one's a Ferncliff Copper. Ooh. And uh, this one is grown from our Whidbey Island Grove dahlias, would be island dahlias. Wow. Um, all these dahlias actually are island grown, um, would be island dahlias and hand-picked homestead over on um, Bashan Island. Awesome. So, and how, I noticed you're clipping, how much are we clipping off here? We are clipping them so that the base of this head is going to kind of rest on top of the lip and of the base. It, and okay. you're doing it at an angle. I'm doing it at an angle. That way it allows for more water absorption. Oh, okay. If it's flat across, it's a smaller opening. But if it's a longer, straighter, longer angled cut, mm -hmm. then it has a wider surface for drinking, mm. drinking water. And you already have like a wired I thing do. in here. I yeah. do. I've got a little nest of chicken wire that's already in the vase, and that's going to help anchor the flowers because they're pretty top heavy. Yeah. So we want to make sure that they're not going to fall out again. Okay. So we're going to start with our bigger heads. So we've got the Ferncliff Copper. We've got, um, this is a Black Beauty. This one is so beautiful and they're so rich. rich. They're so beautiful. <laughs> They're so beautiful. Oh my goodness. And if you have a little um, little little side shoot, you can cut it off or you can leave it on there. Okay. If they're longer, maybe cut it off and we can add that later. Will but they again, ever bloom once they're potted? They will. They yeah. won't necessarily get to the size of this. And uh -huh. maybe that one won't really open, but like this one will be kind of a, a baby version of its of its larger counterpart. Okay. I shouldn't be moving ahead. I should be <laughs> moving with the rest of the class. I know. It's so easy yeah, to get like, excited. Tell me exactly what to do next. So I'm grabbing my three biggest dahlias that okay. I have in my lot, and I'm going to just m make a triangle of dahlias here. And okay. then we're going to start building up from there with the next size up, and then the smaller ones will be a little bit airier towards the... Maybe cut this one a little bit shorter, just oh, because okay. it's... So notice how it wants to keep going downwards? Yes. So if we cut it a little bit shorter... It'll rest on the edge of the vase, and then it's going to show Aww. its little pretty face. Gorgeous. I'm like, how yeah. are the rest of them going to fit in here? Because this is our full <laughs> year. Um, they you, will fit. I heard you have a special trick for uh, table settings. What's that? So when you're making a centerpiece for a table, there is a rule of thumb that you should never make the arrangement taller than the top of your fist with your elbows sitting on the table. Oh. Right? So if it's That's bigger than short. this, when you're sitting down, you want to be able to see, have a conversation with the people on the other side of the table with you instead of them trying to move the flowers out of the way. Or if your arm is like the flowers will not cover it up. <laughs> I never thought about that. I'm going to use arm that one. Arm wrestling to decide who's going to pay for the check, right? Right. Love. Right. All right. So moving on. Um, this lovely lance. My, my Dahlia girl is just trying to teach me lance and... <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna make it. We'll call it a pretty peach one. It's a. It is a peach fuzz. Love it. Um, and that's a Snohomish 
grower. Oh. Okay, so now we're moving to the so more moving like... to the lighter, the, the airier ones, the smaller dahlias, and we're just kind of going to weave them in between here. And I am making a bit more of a pave. Pave means that's going to be a little bit of a tighter design. Okay. Um, and this isn't just for home. You do this for events as well, right? Oh, absolutely. What kind of events do you most get kind of called for or booked for? You know, we do a lot of corporate events. So restaurant gigs like at Canlis and so we'll make centerpieces and following those rules, making sure that they can still talk, have conversations on the other side, but big enough that it's going to not get lost on the side, the table. So that's important when you're designing a centerpiece. And you also need to keep in mind, is the table going to be round or is it going to be more linear? Mm -hmm. And then when you're designing, I always have my designers kind of look down. Are there any holes? Do you see the mechanics? Are you seeing the, just the lip of the vase? That's fine. But you know, if it looks like it's missing a, missing a flower, oh, then you can no. kind of tuck one in. Oh. <laughs> oh no, oh no. <laughs> All right, so you went so fast, you weren't following the rules. Oh. Uh oh. See how short these I just are? got called out are in you front in of oh. the entire class. You got oh, too excited. Yeah. We're gonna Were you like just that as a tech those underneath. Maybe. There you go. A little bit. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Where should I put this one? I feel like it's already pretty balanced. Let's see. Should I switch it up and put it down here? Yeah, you could do that. Kind of okay. tuck it underneath that. That's beautiful. Hey. That's Maria, actually really Maria, pretty. Maria, I've made this for you. <laughs> this will be waiting for you when you get back. Aw, that's so sweet. So we have one more okay. element to add. This yes. is chestnut. Horse chestnut. It's a little tacky, but it's like like <laughs> sticky tacky. Oh, not, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> not aesthetically tacky. I mean, <laughs> I'm the beholder. But the really, really fun, just interesting conversation pieces. So I'm making a centerpiece because it can be awkward at the table. I might need something to talk about. Sure. So I like my flower arrangements to be conversation starters. Uh -oh. Like, how would you not mention this? It reminds like, me of like a Dr. Seuss What the hell is going on with this guy, right? <laughs> So we're gonna cut that in and just kind of let it go crazy. Pop it gotta in somewhere. Pop it in, kind of off to the side, or and tuck another one in to the side. I give you guys oh. both a couple stems. That really makes it luxurious. Yep. I, feel like. mm. I forgot. I've got to do mm. that. Hey, okay. <laughs> yeah, my my fist is shorter than yours, but there we go. So that's okay. you don't want it to go higher. Than your wrist? Higher than your fist. Higher than, oh, Higher okay, than so your fist. I still got, I still got it. And you've got some wine and design classes starting up at your shop. I do, I do. Tell do. us all about how those. Well, the classes just launched this morning, mm -hmm. and we've got quite a few coming up. Um, our next one is going to be Still Life with Dahlias. So it's going to feature all the different styles and colors and types and varieties of the dahlias, but it, to create more of a Dutch master's sort of a painting and flowers. Very cool. And then it's going to have the memento mori, get hooked, you know, because we're easing into the Halloween season, which is my favorite, of mm -hmm. course. Um, and so the memento mori means remember you have to die, oh. moments of death. <laughs> so you'll see in those still life paintings, there's like rotting fruit or flies or skulls or something a little dark and macabre. It balances out the flowers a little bit. It balances <laughs> out the flowers. So celebrating life at the full circle. Right? On that note, Melissa, thank you yes. so much. <laughs> How do we do? What do we get? A, B, C? Oh, you all get A's. Okay, yeah. I'll take it. We've wow. <laughs> Did we really? Or are you just saying that because we're on TV? No, they're actually beautiful. Oh, they're really stunning. I think we did pretty good. We did A's great. and they're beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Melissa. That was awesome. We posted a little more info on Terra Bella Flowers up on our website, fox13seattle.com slash studio13live. And hey, coming up, we're going to be cooking up fried rice and curry dishes with Noi Thai cuisine. A little look at their Asian-inspired brunch.